Hello everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a Labyrinth deck profile for October 2024. Uh, this is going to be a Math Labyrinth build, it's, uh, utilizing the Simultaneous Equation Cannons, um, and just a whole heap of trap cards. So I'll get straight into it. Um, I will preface this by saying that I'm opting to play um, Arius in this build as well. So typically you would just see the monsters as one lovely and three lady. Um, I'm opting to play three Arias, and it's currently sitting in the shifter spot. So when you see these builds, often you'll see shifter. I'm citing it, um, but specifically for my locals, um, most people actually play shifter. Um, there's a lot of just kind of like an anti-meta or just, just not, not a whole heap of people play the just like top best deck at the time. So shifter is in a lot of decks, typically at local. So that's something that you will probably main deck over Arias. Um, you might not even side Arias, but personally, I just thought it's locals. Um, we're playing lots of trap cards. Arias um, is pretty good. I'll still side the shifter, but often yeah, shifter just ends up um, kind of being dead half the time when you're playing against decks that utilize it more or still want to play it as well. So um, that's the Labyrinth Monsters. Playing, playing three Pot of Duality. And we are playing three Runic Flashing Fire for spells. Um, obviously, duality is pretty crazy in a build like this where you're not really normal summoning, you're not special summoning really at all during your turn, um, especially turn one. Um, it's just utilized for more consistency. And then Runic Flashing Fire um, makes for good disruption going second. Um, you can obviously pop things, but also if you need to, you can summon uh, Hugin. If your opponent is trying to Lightning Storm back row, you could chain Runic Flashing Fire and then tag the Hugin out to prevent the destruction of all your back row. So it's um, a pretty good card for just like kind of stopping your opponent's board wipes or things that are going to threaten your back row. Then for the trap cards, we are playing just in terms of helping with engine. We've got three big welcome, three welcome and three trap trick. Um, these are all fairly self-explanatory. I've thought about maybe cutting down on welcome specifically, but um, yeah, I think I think three and three is fine. Um, big welcome is great just for you know, interruption in the graveyard, but um, these these cards are fantastic and trap trick obviously accesses the whole deck um, pretty much so any of the future trap cards like they're all we're all playing at least two copies of all the traps in the deck so trap trick can access all of them except for solemn strike uh, one thing i'm opting not to play in this deck is floodgates i'm just going all for normal traps and solemn strike so i have taken out things like skill drain I'm not playing power sinkstone or anything like that this is just normal traps um and again it's just for locals um, if I was taking this to something bigger, maybe you'd rethink and throw some floodgates in just because they're pretty good, but um, yeah, I'm opting not to, not, not to play them. Um, then in terms of just the really big Haymaker traps, we're on Torrential Tribute, we're on Daruma Kama Cannon, and the Simultaneous Equation Cannons. Um, so the whole extra deck is built around this card, of course. Um, this deck doesn't really utilize the extra deck at all. Um, these are all kind of your big board wipe type cards, and then the last remaining spots are more just like niche picks or traps that kind of have a little bit more versatility. So these ones are all just, I mean, not to say that these aren't versatile, but these ones are just big ball wipe does what it needs to do. Um, and then we've got two Ice Dragon's Prison. I'm playing two Terrors of the Over. I don't know, I just find this card super fascinating. I'm, I'm a huge fan of it. So um, playing this one and got two D Barrier alongside three Solemn Strike to close out. The rest of the deck, uh, it's a 40 card main deck. Solemn Strike is just a house of a card. Like I'd almost want to find more copies of something like Solemn Strike, whether it's like the, uh, I can't even think of what it is. It's the um, Thunder. It was a counter track most recent set. I think it's a very similar to Solemn Strike. Um, but you'd almost want to play more, I feel, but um, yeah, this is this is fine. Um, then the extra deck is built around um, the simultaneous equation cannons. Um, so if you don't know how it works, you need fusions and exceeds. So I'm playing and I think this is fairly standard for most builds. So I'm playing the five fusions. So specifically they're level one, two, three, four, and five. These are just the runic fusions and millennium eyes being a level one fusion. Um, and then for the XEs, we're playing two rank threes. Now, I think I, I, you see in other builds where they do have a more kind of optimized um, list of XEs monsters, but really we can't summon any of these. So I don't think it really matters too much. Um, so playing two threes, two fours, two fives, two sixes, and I'm opting to play two sevens. Um, just kind of gets you there in numbers. I don't know if the sevens are super necessary. Um, it just adds more versatility to equation cannons. Sometimes you find yourself not 
uh, at, in the right, uh, you, the, the equations don't line up, right, in terms of how the card works. So sometimes you don't get into a position where you can. So, so the sevens are useful in some, some instances, just gives you a little bit more flexibility, but you definitely lose out on, um, for example, playing like the one SP Little Knight or playing one or two, like a, a Chaos Angel, like having Chaos Angel in the, in the extra usually goes a long way because we're playing obviously lots of eights. We've got Hugon as a light, so that makes a light and darkness Chaos Angel. So we're not playing that. We lose that by having the sevens, but... Um, yeah, I just opt I'm just just really leaning into the equation canons and just just practicing my math skills really. Um, but if you're not sure how it works, essentially you, um, you you count the number of cards in the field and hands, and you've got to banish the the two two XTS monsters and uh, fusions that equal the same number. So for example, two threes and a one is seven, so that's seven cards total. But then you'd banish. A level four monster. So you banish if they've got a level four monster, you return the Millennium Eyes and the, the Break Sword, and you, you banish a four. So that's if there's seven cards total on hand and field, and there is a level four on the field. Then three and two gets you to eight, three and three is nine, three and the four is ten, three, three and five is eleven, and then the fours and the ones is nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And it just each one you you're crossing over a number of um levels um with monsters on the board. So Usually, when your opponent has um, a, a, an eight-star monster, and eight-star is very common, as well as seven-star, like they're kind of like the big ones. Um, you can generally use any combination of the Xyz and fusions to really just get there, especially in terms of like number of cards in hand and field. So they're usually the easiest levels to hit. It's like your seven and eight, I find. Um, but the, the only problem I think you, I know I have with this deck is just the probably the time it takes to really just process the the maths involved. Um, so I'm getting quicker at it, but definitely requires some thought. Um, then for the side deck, uh, I'm playing Lord of the Heavenly Prison. Um, this is another thing you could main deck over Arias. Um, if you weren't playing Shifter or Arias, you could literally main deck this. I've just decided I want something more dedicated for going second, and Arias going second is really useful, um, because you can obviously set like some of those big Haymaker trap cards and kind of blow your opponent out going second when they're going first. Um, and then also got Shifter, so Shifter can just go in place of the Arias um, at any point in time. But then I'm also playing Lava Golem and Evenly Matched. These are just more for um, other kind of combo decks. This is more just for control decks, I think. Um, yeah, just something else you can side in. And then Judgment. So in terms of like your, like, especially if you're going second, uh, going first, sorry, into, you know, decks, and, they, and everyone's going to side in Lightning Storm, right? Between the Runics, the Judgment, and the Lord, that's nine cards that you can hopefully see to stop a lightning storm or a duster um to really just prevent your opponent from just blowing out your entire back row because i mean that, that's all this deck this deck is it's just all back row um so i can i can show test hands I'll, I'll do a few but really it's just going to be trap cards right okay so i just record a few test hands um nothing too crazy obviously it's just going to be setting a bunch of cards but we can kind of just like talk about what the hands look like i suppose um So we've got Cannons, D-Barrier, Strike, Big Welcome, and Trap Trick. Um, obviously seeing Strike in the hands is always really good, uh, especially for like letting things like a Big Welcome resolve or like one of your big kind of Haymaker traps, just like forcing them through, especially if your opponent has like Omni Negates. Um, this just allows you to get through because if it's like, you know, use this chain, you know, like the Desiree, for example, like Strike on that and we're feeling pretty good. Um, just to like kind of let those go through. But obviously this is... Uh, Good test hand, we just set five cards and well, I think it's pretty good. Obviously, D-Barrier going second, like if we're going second, not as ideal, but even going second, like it's not, like setting five cards is not terrible, especially when it is backed up by something like Strike, um, you know, Equation Cannons into Strike, definitely feels good. Trap Trick into, you know, another ball breaker like, you know, Daruma Cannon, uh, Dharma Cannon, for example, um, definitely helps get you there. And Strike just really insulates it because no one's really playing the counter traps to stop Strike. Okay, flashing fire, strike, big welcome, strike, and duality. So we fire off duality, we get another flashing fire, an occasion, uh, equation cannons, and a lady labyrinth. Um, so in a hand like this, um, we could opt to take the lady labyrinth, for example. However, in like this just very specific hand, because the only normal trap we have is big welcome, the only way that this is going to be activated, like to be able to summon itself, is if this has already been activated. So 
we kind of lose the, the, the value here. Like if this was Welcome Labyrinth, we'd probably feel better about it, but still it's only, only, the only normal trap we have access to, because otherwise we're just going to be going Big Welcome, Summon Lady, Bounce Lady. Um, so we already get access to Lady through Big Welcome. We, we gain no value by accessing Lovely here, so it's probably not Lady that we take. We could just take the Equation Cannons, just as a, a card to really just get in there with Black Strike. Okay, but Welcome Labyrinth, Treasure Tribute, Karma Cannon, Strike, and Duality. So another just great hand. This is going to be great to summon something like um, Lovely. Um, this could also summon Lady. We've got other like normal traps that can kind of help um, like trigger Lady as well. Uh, we've got Duality, which is going to get us Lady, <laughs> Lady, or Big Welcome. So it, it depends which one we want to take. I mean, we could take Big Black, sorry, Strike's already backing us up from like Ash Blossom. Um, so this could summon Lovely. We've got Strike to protect, protect from Ash Blossom, so like, we could take like Big Welcome as well if we want to, just to kind of get it into rotation. Uh, we're going to be using it to probably summon Lady, Bounce Lady, uh, and then summon it as well. Um, and we've got Traps, of course, to back all that up. So we'd probably take Big Welcome just to put it into the graveyard also and use it, and then we get that future interruption from it also. Also triggering the, um, the Lovely. Okay, we'll do one more. Okay, but like, there's not there's not a lot to talk to with these. Um, okay, so this is not a great hand. Um, now, obviously, if this was Shifter and the matchup was better for Shifter, this hand would feel better. Uh, but it's still not strong, right? Obviously, opening these two is not ideal, even with Arias like on our opponent's turn. Like, if we were going second, yes, we can go Arias into Ice Dragon's prison. Like, it, it just depends on how how successful this is going to be to like stop our opponent, but. Hypothetically, if we did that, use this, use this, use that at some point, we would be, I mean, we could go for Lady like in end phase, just to kind of get it out of the hand, and it's obviously once per turn, and then we draw into Big Welcome, so what are we doing, like, we're setting these two and hoping for the best, maybe attacking over something, um, we're probably not getting too far, um, oh, we're sorry, we could pop something with the Flashing Fire, but of course, if we were playing Chaos Angel, maybe that would be the opportunity for a Chaos Angel, if, depending on, again, what the um, board state was at that time but um yeah so this is the deck um, i'm taking it to locals tonight as of recording this video so i'm hoping to i'm hoping to record some footage as well i'd love to just resolve the equation cannons a whole bunch of times um and just practice my math skills but otherwise that's gonna be it for this one um and i'll catch you in the next one